Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to Data Structures and Game Maker Studio 2. Earlier I made a video about the fundamentals of arrays in Game Maker and how they work, and as part of my ongoing quest to continue remaking some of my older videos on Data Structures and Game Maker, let's talk about the DS list. So if you've used arrays in Game Maker before, the, uh, the concept of the DS list should be nothing new. This video is going to work uh, much the same way as the, uh, as the array video did. It is probably going to cover the same bases too. DS lists are very similar to arrays, except um, in the way that they're created and the way that they're destroyed. Let's start by creating one. What did I do in the uh, in the arrays video? I had a uh, I had a list of player names, which were basically different characters from Super Mario, didn't I? Anyway, whereas with arrays, you could simply say. Uh, you could simply create an array literal like this and put the contents of your desired array between the square brackets. Uh, DS lists are somewhat different. Uh, these are admittedly uh, a little bit more verbose than regular arrays. To create one, you have to explicitly call the function DS list create. This is going to create a, a new data structure inside GameMaker that is a DS list. And to add something to the DS list, uh, you have to say DS list add. And to this function, this is much like the array set function. And um, to add something to the array, uh, you can say ds list add. And this function takes two arguments, well, two or more arguments. One is the list that you want to add to, which is okay. If you want to, uh, you can actually pass multiple Uh, you can pass multiple arguments to the uh, to this DS list add function, and uh, if there are more than one, they will all be added to the list. This is a bit of a little known fact about the DS list add function. I think it's pretty neat. And if you want to find a value at a position in a DS list, DS list find value. Uh, this is going to take two names, player names. It's going to take an index. These, just like arrays, are uh, indexed from zero. So the first element in the list is going to be index zero. The second element in the list is going to be index one, and so on and so forth. I can show this value to the player. And this is going to create ourselves a little message box containing the name at index zero in the DS list. This is going to be Mario Mario. Okay. So far, these are looking somewhat like arrays, but instead of arrays being designed primarily around uh, initializing a, a set of values at the beginning, uh, such as with the array create function or with an array literal, DS lists are designed around creating a list and adding things to the list. Uh, DS list add would be analogous to the array push function, but uh, DS lists are structured inside the computer slightly differently so that it's much faster to add an element to a list than it is to add an element to an array. And like with arrays, and like with most other things in GameMaker, if you want to see the full list of functions that, um, that you can use with the DS list, you can just uh, type DS list and then uh, wait, for the, um, wait for this little drop down to appear, or if you're impatient, you can hit control space to force it to appear. And there is a, uh, there is a whole series of functions you can use. You can also, if you are, if you want to, you can hit F1 or middle click on the DS list create function, and that will open up the uh, the entry in the manual regarding DS lists. And you can um, you can look at the index. You can look at all the different functions that exist for DS lists and uh, what you can do with them. Uh, that's uh, that's also something you can do with um, with arrays, which I forgot to mention, which may be worth mentioning. That's just general game maker advice. Anyway, I'm not going to discuss each and every one of these functions because there are a lot of them. Uh, the important ones that you may care about might be DS list uh, replace, which is a function for uh, setting a value at a particular location in the array. So what can I say? Uh, DS list name uh, replace player names. Let's replace index one so Luigi can get the shaft again. Sorry, Luigi. And the name that we can um, the name that we can insert instead might be. Toadsworth. And if I try to instead DS list find value, um, the, the, uh, the value at index one in, um, in player names, instead of seeing Luigi Mario, we are now going to indeed see Toadsworth. Okay. Uh, you also have DS list insert, 
this is for, as you can imagine, inserting a value into the middle of the list. So if I were to insert at position, how about two? I need another name. Captain Toad. Always a fun name to insert. Uh, you can insert Captain Toad into the list and we will see uh, at position two. Uh, where previously I did not use the correct uh, pluralization there. Let's try that again. Uh, where previously uh, Princess Toadstool would have been at index two in the list, uh, we now have Captain Toad. Okay. Uh, DS list uh, delete. DS list delete. Remove. No, it is delete. Okay, so a DS list delete is the opposite. This is for deleting a particular element at a particular position. A somewhat interesting one is DS list, um, let's say DS list find value. Let's say, I mean a DS list find index. This will search the list. Did I say find value? I'm pretty sure I said find value. A DS list find index will search the list and it will return the index in the list where a value can be found if it can be found. So if I were to say DS list find index uh, player names and the value that we're searching for is um, Bowser the Koopa, I can, uh, I can show message this value and this will tell us which index in the list Bowser the Koopa can be found. Okay, so we're going to see Bowser the Koopa lives at element number four, index number four in this list. I keep using the word element and index interchangeably, and I should probably just pick one. But Bowser can be found at index four. Uh, if you try to search for a value which is not in the list, there's another character. Uh, it will instead return negative one. And negative one is a sort of a, a sort of error code of sorts. It won't crash the game or anything. But you can check if you use the DS list find in index function. You can check to see if the result is equal to negative one to see if the uh, to see if the value you're searching for exists in the list. Hey. On that note, uh, arrays would crash. Arrays would crash the game if you tried to uh, look up a value which did not exist. If you tried to look up an index which did not exist, this list is, for example, five values long right now. If I try to access element number ten, which is obviously not in the list, instead of crashing, we're going to see that a game maker will return undefined which can be nice. The same is true if you try to, uh, say, use index negative one or something like that, or I think any other invalid um, invalid value. Will game maker crash if I try to, like, DS list find value and um, look up something like a string as the position? This might actually crash the game. This crashes the game. Okay, so it has to be a number. Anyway, that can be a useful safeguard against things that might otherwise cause your code to crash. Uh, you can store undefined values themselves inside inside DS lists. So it's maybe not advisable that you check for undefined instead of checking to see if the index that you're trying to search in the in the list is within the bounds. But in any case, that's how it works. In much the same way that arrays have the function array sort, um, DS lists have a function which is DS list sort, and this is a this is much the same thing player, names, uh, you can specify the list that you want to sort and you can specify ascending or descending order. Uh, setting it to true will make the value start small and go up, or if you're, if you're sorting uh, strings, it'll make the value start towards the beginning of the alphabet and end towards the end of the alphabet. And you can do this to sort a list. Uh, naturally, you can set the second parameter inside DSList sort to false if you want to do the opposite. There is also, and I don't believe arrays have a uh, have an analogous function for this, but there is also ds list shuffle, and this is a function which will randomize the list. This can be handy in some situations. If you have a uh, if you have a list representing something like a deck of cards, you might want it to literally be shuffled. If you have some other values which you want to be randomized, it can be a handy function to have. Another function which DS lists have, and I honestly do not know why, is a DS list set. And this will behave pretty much the same way that DS list replace does. Again, it's basically analogous to setting a value inside an array at a specific position. Um, DS list replace and DS list set, for all intents and purposes, do the same thing. I do not know why they. It's just one of the weird quirks of Game Maker. Hey. That brings me to my next, next subject, which is that um, if you ever get sick and tired of writing out these long function names for DS lists, especially DS list find value, 
because that is that is a a rather long function name and it's something that you really can do uh, with an array with something like uh, simply square brackets. Uh, you can't simply use square brackets when it comes to DS lists, unfortunately. This will crash the game. Uh, we're going to try and treat a value as an array, which is not an array. Trying to index a variable, which is not an array, is the exact wording of the error message. And uh, GameMaker won't like that. But what you can do is use what is known as an accessor. And accessors are relatively new in GameMaker. They were introduced in GameMaker Studio 1. And this allows you to treat a, a DS list as an array, and it allows you to use the square bracket notation on them. Um, instead of just using the, the square brackets themselves, you would instead use the, um, use the single pipe symbol, or the broken pipe symbol. If you've never seen this before, uh, this is the character which you might use for, for or, logical or, inside conditionals. It's the character above the, uh, the enter key on standard US keyboards. And this allows us to uh, this allows us to much more concisely access and modify things inside DS lists by using uh, the uh, the square bracket notation with them. Now, if I were to run the game and if I were to look up index two in the DS list, we would see that we now um, we have Captain Toad as if we were using the DS list find value function on it. Uh, again, I believe these inside Game Maker when it when it compiles your game is uh, perfectly analogous to actually saying DS list find value like this. I believe these, uh, I believe these compile to the same exact game maker instructions, but, uh, this is obviously a lot less typing than DS list find value. So generally you're probably going to find this preferable. Uh, just remember to use the, uh, remember to use the accessor instead of just using square brackets. Otherwise game maker won't know what you're doing. Okay. And the same goes for setting a value. Uh, instead of using either of these two functions, DS list replace or DS list set, uh, we could use a third function, a, a third, well, not really a function, but we can use the accessor. Uh, so again, square brackets and then the pipe, the pipe symbol. Uh, we're going to set index one to toadsworth like this. I can comment both of these out and we're going to see that uh, if we look up the value at index one in the DS list that it is going to work. Okay. Wonderful. Again, that is much more concise and much less typing and much faster to develop than trying to type out the, the big old long function name constantly. That's another one of the many things about Game Maker that I don't know how we survived before that was added as a language feature in Game Maker Studio One. Anyway, for some functions, you still do need to use the function names. For example, DS list add, DS list insert, DS list sort. Uh, there are no accessors for that naturally because that's not. These are not functions that access a specific value. Uh, they are functions that modify the list themselves. But most of the time, most of what you're probably going to be doing with DS lists is uh, setting or, or reading values from it. And in cases like those, the accessors can be very useful indeed. Now, the data structures in GameMaker, which are not arrays, are stored in a somewhat, what we would call by today's standards, weird manner. So if I were to, instead of uh, showing a message of, a, of an entry in the DS list, if I were to simply show message the DS list itself, instead of seeing the entire contents of the array, uh, like we did when we were using arrays, we are instead just going to see a number. For me, it shows zero. For if you were using some other DS list, it might show some other arbitrary, for all intents and purposes, random number. And that is because DS lists and a lot of the other data structures in Game Maker, anything anything in Game Maker that is created with a create function, uh, those are just IDs that are stored somewhere else inside the computer and referenced in GML with an ID. And those IDs are numbers. And unless you specifically tell Game Maker that you're trying to deal with a DS list, uh, Game Maker isn't going to know what to do with this number. Uh, that is, in fact, the reason that you can't simply say player, names, index, whatever, without the, uh, without the list accessor, because um, for all Game Maker knows, this may well be, what you may well be trying to do is something like player names equals zero, and then trying to access the, um, some index from a value that is, that is just zero. And that, that obviously doesn't make any sense. Game Maker will, cause, will throw an error and you won't be able to progress. So you can still access stuff inside the DS list with the DS list find value function or with the, uh, with the, with the list accessor like this. Uh, if you wanted to, you can loop over. I'm going to get rid of these things down here. If you wanted to, you could loop over 
the list. Uh, to get the size of a list, DS list size. Like this, uh, much like array length. And you can uh, you can start at zero. You can go up until i is less than ds list size, and you can increment the uh, you can increment variable i, and you can show message player names. Uh, you could use the long ds list find value name, or you could use the the, uh, the accessor and uh, look up index i, and this is going to show us each of the names in sequence: Mario, Mario, Toadsworth, Captain Toad, Princess Toadstool, Bowser the Koopa, and uh, and that's the list. You can still do all this, but when you're finished with the list, uh, you need to explicitly destroy it with the DS list destroy function, and that is going to take player names. That is going to take a reference to the list that we created, and that is going to uh, remove it from the computer's memory. Otherwise, it will just sit there indefinitely, and uh, over time, they could pile up and become a memory leak, which would be bad. Arrays in GameMaker and some other things in GameMaker do not have this problem because they are what are known as garbage collected. GameMaker will detect when an array is no longer referenced by anything else in the game and is no longer able to be accessed and it will automatically delete it, but it, uh, it cannot do that with DS lists. GameMaker has no way of telling whether a variable which contains the number 0 is actually a reference to DS list with the ID of 0, or if it's just literally the number zero, and uh, consequently, DS lists will just sit in the in the game's memory until either you specifically specifically destroy them or until the game ends. Hey. Most of the time, this means just in an object's destroy event. Uh, so if you create an object and you uh, you you give it a DS list in the create event, uh, you will then want to uh, you will then want to destroy the list in the destroy event when the object is destroyed. Um, this may also be, if this is a local variable, you may want this to just uh, automatically be destroyed at the end of the script, at the end of the function. Anytime you know that the list won't be needed anymore, and you want the memory to be reclaimed by the computer. Because again, if you don't, they'll just pile up over time, and eventually your game could crash. Alright, is that enough doom and gloom for today? That's how DS lists work. They have some advantages over simple arrays when it comes to things like performance when you're adding to them. They have some disadvantages, such as not being automatically destroyed. DS lists are a bit of an older language feature of GameMaker language. Back from the days when simple arrays were kind of missing a lot of features, which kind of made them pretty hard to use. But ultimately, it's up to you whether you want to use an array or a DS list for particular tasks. Anyway, I'm gonna stop here. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I try to post about two videos a week, one of these and one Let's Make a Tower Defense game. I make a lot of videos about 3D stuff in GameMaker. The series on data structures notwithstanding, I like to generally talk about stuff that doesn't really get a lot of attention in GameMaker. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there are links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you all found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Kiara Elizabeth, Connor, David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Halo Factory, Posho, Sindra Larson, Tusk, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.